Dear children, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I am discussing with you about elementary canal and mainly the associated glands with the digestion or you can say digestive glands. We have three, the liver, the pancreas and the salivary glands. The salivary glands which you have in your mouth, they are three pairs of salivary glands, parotid, submaxillary and sublingual. They secrete saliva that is delivered into your buccal cavity. You have the feeling of it all the time otherwise your mouth will become very dry. Do one experiment when you eat little before that just take a piece of bread or piece of chapati and put in your mouth and go on masticating it for say 15 minutes. Do not swallow it. After some time it becomes sweet. Why? Why this happened? It happened because salivary amylase enzyme present in saliva converted starch into carbohydrate or glucose and that is why it is tasting sweet. That means digestion began. Now when you swallow it, your stomach has to work less to digest it and that is why it is important to masticate the food properly and make use of saliva. Not only this, saliva also lubricates the food. The food which you are eating may be soft food, may be hard food, may be with some liquid, may be dry, but it should be lubricated before you swallow it otherwise you cannot swallow it easily and that work is done by saliva. So saliva is important in many ways which is secreted by these digestive gland called salivary glands. It will keep your mouth moist. It will lubricate the food which you eat and it is containing an enzyme salivary amylase also known as tylen which will convert starch into carbohydrate. So this is the value of your saliva. Coming to pancreas which is another important digestive gland in our body. You know that it is situated in the duodenum or between the two limbs of duodenum, it is very delicate organ but very important. It is a mixed gland of exocrine and endocrine function. Also sometimes we call it compound gland. The endocrine part is islet of Langerhans which is source of two hormones insulin and glucagon. But today we are discussing pancreas in terms of digestion, in terms of elementary canal. So it has exocrine part called SNI and these SNI are source of pancreatic juices. These are digestive juices and are going to help in our digestion. Pancreas which is just a membrane structure ends on to duodenum through pancreatic duct. Through this duct the pancreatic juice will be delivered into the duodenum and will start working on the food after duodenum not before duodenum. Liver indeed is the largest digestive gland in our body and also largest gland. It weighs around 1 to 1.5 kilos in the body and it is placed just below the diaphragm. I hope you know what I mean by diaphragm. You have thoracic cavity. The lower part of thoracic cavity is dome shaped and that is diaphragm. Diaphragm is a posterior end of thoracic cavity. Just below this is located liver and its duct called hepatic duct also ends on to the duodenum and carries its secretion in the form of bile to the duodenum. Bile is the secretion of liver. It is green bluish in color and it is very important for you. It is having some bile pigments, some bile salts 
and there is one sphincter of Audi where it is present between hepatic duct and the duodenum. So, bile can go from liver through hepatic duct to duodenum, but not the backward. So, that is one thing and for that we have this sphincter of Audi after the name of scientist Audi who discovered it. Its main job is emulsification of fat. First, let me explain you what emulsification means. Fat, whatever we eat in terms of oil, in terms of butter, any fatty food, that fat molecule is to be digested and then absorbed. Now, you need enzyme to digest it. We have it. But enzyme cannot enter the fat molecule. That means only surface will be digested. The interior cannot be digested. So, what happens? Bile will break big fat molecules into small pieces and very, very small pieces, as small as possible, so that surface area is increased. A smaller the particle, more the surface area. Now, enzyme will come and touch the surface because enzyme can only touch the surface of fat molecule, cannot enter into it. Now, by that, the surface of the fat will be digested. So, breaking down a fat molecule into smaller particles, the main purpose is to increase the surface area, so it can be acted upon by enzyme and that is how the fats will be digested. And ferrying action is also there, the pile salts will go, do the job and come back to the liver, because you cannot afford to lose bile salts with every action of bile. So, these salts are ferried back. Bilirubin and bilveridin are the pigments which are delivered to your elementary canal along with the bile and the color of your feces is due to these pigments. So, liver is the largest gland and it has so many things to do. In the liver, there are hexagonal areas we call them liver lobules. In that lobules, there are small, small cells and the structure is such that bile is produced and is collected in a bladder, a ball like structure inside and that is called gall bladder. Sometimes, if you take too much of calcium or too much of oxalate in your food, then some particles remain attached to gallbladder and then more particles will settle down on that and this will be converted into small stone. Stones are mainly based on oxalate ion, sometimes on calcium ions and that is why if there are stones, they will be normally in gallbladder. Why in liver? Why in gallbladder? Why not in other parts of the body that much? The reason being the liver is highly vascularized, richly supplied by blood and that is why liver is so red in color, but at the same time it is very delicate also. So, any such solid particle falling on it through blood, it will be converted into stone. So, what advice you get out of it? That we should take calcium in the limits. Of course, we always tell you children should take milk and milk products so that you have enough calcium, so that your growth is good, so that your nervous system works well, because we know that calcium also helps in conduction of nerve impulse. But if you take too much of calcium products, then this calcium may disturb liver and may form stones in the gallbladder. Similarly, oxalate ion, which is another reason for gallbladder stones, this is found on cover of pulses and on uh, the pulses which are heavy in nature like uh, gram, like rasma, like uraddal and cover of that is even more injurious because they have oxalate ions and this oxalate ion in the system is converted to urate and that urate creates problem for kidney functioning. So, liver is the area where metabolism of all these things will take place. If person drinks lot of alcohol, 
it is going to act on hepatic tissue. Hepatic tissue means liver tissue and is going to degenerate the liver tissue and that we will call cirrhosis. And if you have damaged cells of the liver, the liver will not function. And if liver will not function, that metabolic activities, the metabolism of various products in the body will be hindered, will be either stopped or will be incomplete. That will also result into malfunctions. So, proper functioning of liver is very, very important for metabolism, for fat handling, that means handling of digestion of fat in your alimentary canal, handling of medicines and drugs which you take and also handling of other things which are not required by your body, but you are taking it. I know my dear students, you are young and you like to take coffee. Think of coffee seed which has a cover and think of that cover which has oxalate ion and now this oxalate ion is going to create problem. So, taking coffee is good, but do not go for excess. Anything if you take with certain limits will be ok. So, liver is very, very delicate tissue and we have to take ultra care of liver. Of course, there are certain infections which infect the liver like uh, jaundice, it comes uh, through liver only, but any time one has jaundice, the liver is really badly affected. Coming to pancreas, which is a digestive gland in addition to being an endocrine gland. Its digestive juices are a group of juices which take care of proteins, carbohydrates and fats. This is one part of the story of pancreas. Other part is endocrine part, like islet of Langerhans, which will secrete two hormones, insulin and glucagon. You all are familiar with the word insulin, with the word diabetes, with the word sugar in blood. Now, if insulin is not enough, the person is diabetic, cannot handle sugar. But more important is glucagon. If your sugar level is going very low, your glucose level should be 80 milligram percent and when it goes low, it stimulates center for hunger and you feel hungry, you eat food and again you have glucose in your blood. But if there is some medical situation and hence your glucose level is going very low, then the problem comes and the problem is that only food to your brain is glucose and oxygen and if brain does not get glucose, it will die. Of course, we have blood brain barrier to handle this situation. But at that point of time, and the hormone called glucagon from pancreas will bring sugar from cell to the blood and save our life from that situation. So, children, you know what a wonderful machinery you have in form of your body. It works extra for you. It has many systems, double arrangement, triple arrangement to keep you alive. But now, it is your duty also to take care of each and every part of your body. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you.